Hey Vintage family, this is Luke and Brenda and we want to welcome everyone to church this morning. We hope the service connects you with the Lord in a season that can feel lonely and encourages you to be bold in sharing God's word with others. We've had an exciting past few months between getting married and adopting our dog Luna, but we also can't wait to be together with y'all again in the Lord's timing. We'd like to share a passage with you all that we hope brings you comfort in these uncertain times. This is John 14, 25 through 28. These things I've spoken to you while I am still with you, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Please join us for worship.
morning, family. This is the time in our service where we confess our sins to the Lord and we reflect on the ways in which we fill our hearts with things other than Jesus. I'd like to read from Psalm 51, verses 1 and 2. Blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Let's move forward in worship, knowing that Jesus died for our sins and that we are forgiven. Our souls are cleansed because of his goodness. Please stand with me in worship.
This morning's scripture reading is from Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, family. I'm so grateful to be able to worship the Lord together again. If you're new to Vintage Church Durham, my name is Michael Darbuz. I'm one of the pastors here of this great faith family. If you have a Bible, we invite you to open with us to Matthew chapter 6 as we continue through our sermon series entitled King's Kids, where we learn what it looks like to live a life that's pleasing and acceptable to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I ask that you would pray with me as we prepare to dive into the Word of God together on this morning. Father, how grateful we are that you continue to meet us at the point of our need, that you speak to us and through us, a word that will continue to comfort us, will continue to charge and challenge us to be the church. Lord, I pray that on this morning, you would meet each and every one of us at the point of our need, and that you would lift up our spirits, that you would comfort our souls, as we continue to learn from your truth and draw closer to Jesus Christ. It's in Jesus' name we pray, and we thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. If you were with us last week, uh, we were in Matthew chapter 6, the first half of the chapter, and we were looking at how Jesus was dealing with the disciplines. He was speaking to his followers about spiritual disciplines that the Pharisees and scribes were practicing. And Jesus wasn't taking issue with what the Pharisees were doing. He actually told his disciples to do the same. But what Jesus was taking issue with was the heart behind what the Pharisees were doing. The Pharisees and scribes were practicing these disciplines so that they could be seen, so that they might be praised by others. And Jesus was letting his followers know, you and I know, that we were to do these disciplines with a different heart, with a pure purpose to please our Father. And so we'll see in today's text that Jesus is dealing with the heart again. Last week he dealt with why we do what we do, the heart behind it. This week we'll see how what we do impacts our heart. And so we see here in verse 19 of Matthew chapter 6, Jesus tells his followers, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. Jesus is making it clear that there are treasures on earth. He doesn't say that there are no treasures. He said, do not lay up your treasures on earth. And the reason why Jesus communicates that we as his followers shouldn't lay up our treasures on earth is because the treasures on earth decay. They die. He says moth and rust destroy them. And if they don't decay and die, then thieves come in, they break in and steal those treasures. And in the context of this passage in Matthew chapter 6, we understand that Jesus is speaking about the praise that the Pharisees and scribes were seeking after. The praise, the power, the position, the prestige. These are the treasures on earth that the Pharisees and scribes were pursuing. And Jesus is letting his followers know that these treasures are fleeting. They're temporal and they're not worth investing your time in. Do not lay up your treasures on earth. But Jesus goes on to let his followers know where they should lay up their treasure. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. Lay up your treasures, followers of Jesus, in heaven. Fort Knox has nothing on the Father's kingdom. In God's kingdom, your treasure is secure. He says moth and rust cannot destroy. It does not decay. It does not die. Thieves cannot break in and steal. If you lay up your treasures in heaven, you have an eternal reward. 
And so we would have to ask ourselves the question, well, how do I lay up my treasure in heaven then? Because I would like to have a treasure that does not decay, that does not die, that is not compromised by the selfish nature of man. And Jesus lets us know from Genesis through Revelation how we lay up our treasures in heaven. In a word, obedience. And we can see that if we go back to the beginning. But we'll just uh, park in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 28. God makes it clear what is required for us to lay up our treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves cannot break in and steal. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 1 and 2 read, And if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments that I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. The key to the children of Israel receiving the blessings, the promise of the Lord was to obey his voice, to be careful to do all that the Lord commanded. Now, someone may say, well, yeah, Michael, that was for the children of Israel as they were going into the promised land. And you're right. That is the context which this passage communicates. However, we can still see the character of God, the unchanging nature of our Lord and Savior. So while the blessings that are read in Deuteronomy chapter 28 may not be for the children of God today, what we do see is that consistent nature of God that he blesses those who obey him. And so this still holds true today. If we obey the voice of the Lord and are careful to do all that he says, he will bless his children. And Jesus believed this himself. And so Jesus taught this to his disciples. And we see this in the words captured by John in his great gospel of Jesus in John 14 verses 23 through 24. Jesus is answering his disciple. Judas asked a question and Jesus is letting him know how he can receive the blessings of the Lord. Jesus says, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words and the word that you hear is not mine but the fathers who sent me. See, it's the same, that God is consistent yesterday, today, and forever. If we love the Lord, we will do what he says. And if we do what he says, Jesus lets us know that God himself will make his holy habitation within his children. And you can see that if you continue reading through uh, John chapter 14, that Jesus lets us know the Holy Spirit will be sent and will fill his followers. And so while in Deuteronomy 28, God was speaking about the blessings to come in the promised land of Canaan, the Lord is letting us know that today, if we trust and obey him, we receive a blessing as well. And the blessing that we receive is even greater than Canaan. God says, if we love him and we do what he says, we get God. I mean, look at it. It's right here in, in Matthew 23, uh, excuse me, in John 14, 23. And we will come to him and make our home with him. We get God. So how do you lay up your treasures in heaven? Obey. Please your father. Do what God says. And if we are careful to do what he commands, then we will receive a blessing from the Lord and our treasures will be stored up in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves cannot break in and steal. But the key to Jesus's teaching is the why behind the what. Jesus lets his followers know, don't lay up your treasures on the earth, but lay them up in heaven. And why would he have us to do this? He tells us in verse 21, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. 
Jesus is letting us know that where we place our treasure will determine the trajectory of the person. Right? If we place our treasure in things of this earth, then our trajectory is for the things of this earth. If we place our treasure in heaven, then our trajectory is for the things of God. And so what we do will determine what we love and where our loyalty lies. And Jesus wants our loyalty to lie with his father. Jesus wants our loyalty to lie with him because he knows that there's an eternal reward for those who would trust and obey him. And so as the loving Lord that he is, he's teaching us that where our value lies, it'll determine what we, what we gain, what we have in store for us. And we learn this as we continue to read through the scriptures. John, one of the disciples who were present with Jesus while he was teaching this very impactful lesson, lets us know the impacts of what we do. And here in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17, John writes, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and the pride of life, is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. John is letting us know, don't love the world or the things in the world. And Jesus lets us know, as Matthew records, that if we lay up our treasures on earth, that we will love the things of the world. Our hearts will be bent towards the place where our treasure lies. And here we understand then, if we love the things of the world, then we do not love the Father. And if we don't love the Father, then we're not gonna be in relationship with him. And if we're not in relationship with him, where will we end up? We will not end up with him for all of eternity. And Jesus lets us know through his servant John, that the things of this world are passing away, along with its desires. Moth and rust destroy, thieves break in and steal. So yes, while pleasure, power, prestige, praise may feel good in the moment, it's fleeting and it's not worth the treasure because that treasure is going to fade away. And God wants us to have a treasure that's eternal. So he wants us to love him, to love the things of God, because if we do that, then what we have, what we receive will abide forever. And here John lets us know that we do that by doing the will of God. Whoever does the will of God abides forever. If we do what God says, we will get the promises the blessings of the Lord. And so we're encouraged by the word of God to leave behind the things of this world and to pursue the things of God, to lay up our treasures, store up our treasures in heaven because the treasures of heaven far surpass the treasures of this life. And we learn that through the life of Moses and many other believers. And if we look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24 through 27, we can see why we would be encouraged to leave behind the things of this earth and to pursue the things of God, to lay up our treasures in heaven. It's exactly what Moses did. The scriptures read, by faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. 
by faith, he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Look, it's clear Moses understood it. And Paul, the author of Hebrews, whomever you attribute that to, understands that the treasures of this life, oh, they're pleasurable, but they're fleeting. Look, Moses was willing to leave the pleasures of sin. It says there were fleeting pleasures of sin. Right? So we have to acknowledge that the, the power, the prestige, the fame, the fortune, that they're pleasurable, but they're fleeting. And so Moses understood what we too need to understand as well, that suffering for Christ's sake is greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, than the treasures of this world. And so we need to stay focused on the reward. And if we stay focused on the reward that we have in Christ, then we'll be willing to leave what this world has to offer behind. And we'll take the wise counsel of Jesus. Don't lay up your treasures on this earth, but lay up your treasures in heaven so that we can receive the reward that abides forever, eternity with our Lord and Savior. My daughters, uh, Jelana and Jennifer, host a podcast, the Sunday Afternoon Podcast. And on this podcast, they have a segment, Love and Let Go. And I'm going to r and I'm going to rip off and duplicate from their segment because I feel like this is something that the Lord placed on my heart and it's something that's good for us all to do a treasure check. What are you loving that the Lord is calling you to let go? What treasure on this earth have we been looking to grab a hold to? Something else that we're looking to put our confidence and hope in that's impacting our heart, that's causing us to lean towards the things on earth as opposed to causing us to lean towards the things of God because our focus is on the things of heaven. We value the things of heaven more. What are we loving in this life? Comfort, security, employment. What are we loving? relationships, what are we putting above God that we're putting our stock and our value in that we would be pursuing, storing up our treasure in, saying, if I can just get, fill in your blank, if I can just be in this place, then things would be better, not realizing that God is with us right here, right now. This same individual that we just read about in Hebrews, Moses, was on his way to the promised land with the children of Israel. But they had some issues. And the Lord told Moses that he was going to send the children of Israel to the promised land, but he wasn't going to go with them. He was still going to give them the promise, but he wouldn't go with them. Moses says to God, listen, the promised land sounds good. A land flowing with milk and honey that satisfies and sustains. But I don't want the promise without the promiser. So leave me in the wilderness with you before you send me to the promised land without you. So I'm okay right here, right now. I'm content right here, right now if God is with me. It's not if I get this or when I get there that everything will be okay. No, see, I'm putting my value in something on this earth. If God is present right here, right now, then I should have a peace that passes all understanding right here, right now. And I can rest in God. Because I put my value and my worth in the things of heaven. And I'm laying up my treasure in the things of God. I'm doing what God says. That's where I put my stock. In trusting and obeying my creator. Being faithful to what he said. And so I'm going to praise him like he told me to right here, right now. I'm going to trust him like he called me to right here, right now. I'm going to experience the peace that he has for me right here, right now. And I'm not going to wait for the there and then. The promised land sounds great. And I look forward to being in glory with Jesus one day. But I understand that he's with me right here, right now. And so I have a peace. 
I'm content in Christ and I'm not pursuing something else. What are we loving? What are we looking forward to that's causing us to miss out on God who's present right here, right now? What are you loving that you need to let go so that you can see that we're secure in Christ, willing to leave Egypt behind, willing to leave the fame, the fortune, the power, the position, the title, whatever it is that this world says is valued, is precious, is necessary for a full and happy life, for my best life right now. What am I needing to leave behind? so that I can put my value, my trust, my confidence in the things of God. Don't lay up your treasures on earth. It's fleeting, fleeting, as Moses says, as Moses knows, he would give up enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin, the fleeting pleasures of Egypt, the fleeting pleasures of this world, that he might enjoy the reward living as one who has seen, one who knows the invisible creator, our Lord and Savior. And so may we lay up our treasures in heaven, trust and obey God. Do what he says. Be careful to do what he says. If you love me, Jesus said, you'll do what I command. And if you do what I command, he doesn't say it's a possibility. He guarantees that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, God, will make his home in you and in me. We get God. What greater treasure? What more valuable possession could there possibly be than the Creator himself? People of God, I feel this thing in my heart for you and for me. There are a lot of things that we're looking to, to give us peace. Man, when we get on the other side of this pandemic, we just want things to go back to normal. Listen, news flash. Things will not be back to normal until we are with Jesus because normal was when God created in the garden and everything was good. Once sin entered the world, everything about this life became abnormal. So we won't experience normal again until we're with Jesus, but we're waiting for things to go back to normal. And what we mean by that is for things to go back to the way they were before the pandemic, before all of the tensions that we're experiencing in this world right now. But that's not what God is telling us to wait for. He says, wait on the Lord and be of good strength. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Don't wait for the vaccine. Don't wait for the cure. Don't wait for somebody to come in as a knight in shining armor and sweep you off your feet. No, God is enough. That's what Paul tells us. That's what Paul learned. I don't need for the thorn to be taken away. God's grace is sufficient and God's grace is abundant right here, right now. Is anybody feeling that thing with me on this morning? That God is present. He always has been and he always will be. The same God that we read of in Deuteronomy who promises the blessings to those who obey is the same God who we read of in the New Testament, is the same God who we know right now. He promises his presence if we trust and obey. People of God, let go of whatever it is that we're loving that doesn't line up with the word of God. And may we not put our trust and confidence in anything in this life. But may we lay up for ourselves a treasure in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy, where th thieves cannot break in and steal. And may we experience the abundant, overwhelming joy of the Lord that's eternal from everlasting to everlasting. People of God, I pray that today you feel encouraged in your heart to do like Moses, to trust God and to leave everything else behind, to receive the reward. 
So as we close on this morning, I just want to read from Hebrews chapter 11 again in prayer that you'll be encouraged to grab a hold of the love of the Lord and to do what he says. By faith, this is what Moses did, and by faith, this is what you and I can, and by the strength of the Holy Spirit, will do as well. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. Stay focused, people of God. By faith, he left Egypt. By faith, we leave the things of this world behind, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. We know the almighty creator. May we hold on to the unchanging hand of the Lord, knowing that he's faithful to perform his promises to those who are willing to trust and obey. Will you pray with me? Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the reminder that you're a faithful father who blesses your children and that we can trust in you, that we can put our confidence and hope in you, that we can know with full assurance that you are well able to finish the good work which you began, that you are faithful to perform your promises. And so with confidence, I pray that we, the people of God, will line up with your truth and we'll lay up, we'll store up our treasures in heaven that we might experience the abundant blessings that you have for us so that our love and our loyalty might be with you always. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Well, people of God, we have an opportunity to respond to this great God on this morning together. We're going to sing two more songs of praise where we remind ourselves and we remind others of who God is and who we are in him. And where we sing these praises to the almighty, the all-knowing, the great creator, honoring, reverencing, glorifying his holy name. And so I pray that you would sing these songs of praise with us on this morning and rejoice in the fact that we have a Savior who loves us and who promises an eternal reward to us. And we also invite you to join us in Holy Communion, where we take part in remembering that Jesus was willing to lay down his life so that we might have life more abundantly so that we don't have to wait for the there and then to be in right relationship with our Lord and Savior, but so that we might experience the abundant peace that comes from being in a relationship with our Creator. And so we invite you to take bread and to break it and to dip it in juice that represents the blood of our Lord and Savior and to take of this communion, remembering who God is, what He has done, and who we are, and what we have in store for us if we continue to trust and obey him. And then we also invite you to partner with Jesus and this great work that he's doing in and through Vintage Church Durham. And you can give to the work of the gospel being advanced in this faith family and in the surrounding community by texting Vintage to 77977. And you'll receive a secure link and your generosity will help us to ensure that others experience the love of God and are able to share that love with others, both near and abroad. So thank you, people of God, for being faithful to a God who is trustworthy and who is faithful. So would you stand with us on this morning and lift your voices in praise? 
to a God who's truly worthy of all the honor and the glory. I love you and I'm praying for you. God bless.
Good morning, Vintage Church Durham. Really glad that you joined us today in our worship from home in our series looking at Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. If you were happen to be new, uh, would you consider coming back and joining us again virtually next week as we continue this series? Um, I'd like to close out today's service with a little truth from God's Word from Paul's letter to the Philippians. As I was reading this letter this week, I was reflecting on the season that we've been in where for us at least, one day could be really good family time and the next could be really stressful. 
or the difficulties of working from home are starting to weigh on us and the difficulties of not being able to interact with friends and family are starting to weigh on us. I found myself encouraged by Paul's words while he was in prison to the believers in Philippi where he says, I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. But not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low and how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Vintage Church Durham, I don't know where you're all at today, but if you're anything like me and you find yourself needing encouragement, know and go forward this week knowing that we can do all things through him who strengthens us. I love you all and have a blessed start to your week.